It's the middle of July and that's peak camping season. And what better way to go than in a Model A Ford with a vintage home-built teardrop trailer to match your vehicle. Before I get into how I built this trailer, let me explain that I built this trailer starting back in January of 2017, long before I had a YouTube channel. So most of the shots here will be from still photographs that I took during the build process. Some folks probably think teardrop trailers are an invention of the last decade, but in actuality they were invented in the early 1930s and really gained popularity at the end of World War II. Here we have an article from Mechanics Illustrated from September of 1947 giving pretty detailed instructions on how to construct a teardrop trailer. Of course today we can just go online and go on YouTube and we can find out just about everything you need to know on how to build one of these. The beauty of building it yourself is you build it exactly the way you want it to be with the features and benefits that best serve your needs. Two websites that I found incredibly helpful to get the necessary pieces and parts to put this thing together are eTrailer.com and TeardropTrailerParts.com from Vintage Technologies. Both of these sites have just about everything you need. With access to a welder, making the frame is pretty straightforward. Here I'm using 2 inch by 2 inch square tubing to make the basic rectangle of the frame 4 feet by 8 feet. With some cross bracing and the addition of the tongue, the frame is pretty much complete with the exception of adding the axle. Keep in mind if you're building this trailer with the intention of pulling it with a Model A, weight is paramount. Keep it light. It was my intention to put the electrical lines for the trailer lights inside the tubing to protect it from the elements. But you don't want to do that at this stage because you'll still be drilling lots of holes through the tubing. You don't want to take the chance of nicking the electrical lines. So just run some cheap wire in the tubing now that you can use to pull the electrical lines through at a later date. This is the wiring harness that I eventually pulled through the tubing to deal with the trailer lights and it made it very straightforward and very simple. Using a very thin sheet of plywood I drew a grid pattern on it using two inch square lines and then I was able to transfer the sidewall profile that I wanted to use onto this template. And this is where your creativity can really come out and you can have whatever shape you would like. And yes I did get yelled at for doing this in the middle of the living room. Here is the template that I ended up with and you will notice that I have added some additional length to the 4x8 sheet of plywood and that is because I am 6 foot 3 inches tall and I needed to extend the sleeping box in order to be able to lay in there comfortably and stretch out. The straight bottom edge though is still only 8 feet long to fit my 4x8 foot frame. Standing the template up on the frame, you can see that the bottom edge is 8 feet long. The added distance extends forward and back of the 4 by 8 foot frame. Well, here's my mess. I've got half my garage in this garage. All my tools. Getting the axle ready to be put on. Got the walls cut out over there. There's the wall. Got the bottom over there, so as soon as I can get the frame done, it'll come together quickly. Start looking like something. To build the axle, I used 2 inch by 2 inch square steel tubing, and then I got these number 84 spindles from eTrailer.com that are made to be welded into that tubing. It made building the axle very straightforward. Since I intended to use Model A wheels, I needed to find a 5 on 5 and a half inch hub that would work with those number 84 spindles. Both of these parts I got from eTrailer.com. Here you can see I've added a small piece of tubing to each of the rear corners of the frame. That's in order to be able to mount these stabilization jacks. When you're using the unit, you can drop these down and it helps level and keep the unit stable so it's not wiggling around. With the frame now complete, we can start working on the body. 
Here you can see I added a little storage compartment that will be underneath the mattress in the sleeping box. I painted the underneath side of the unit with some asphalt paint that you can find in any ranch supply store. This stuff is made for fence posts that go in the ground to keep it from rotting. I figured that was more than good enough to prevent the bottom of my trailer from getting water damage if I drive it during inclement weather. For the floor and for the side walls we use three quarter inch birch plywood. It's very strong and lighter than oak and when you stain it and varnish it the grain really comes out and it really looks pretty. I was really happy with uh, using the birch. Well I haven't had a whole lot of time to work on the trailer but we're making a little progress. We got the countertop in and we got the roughed out cabinetry underneath and we got the braces up on top so it's coming slowly went and got Model A fenders that will go over the Model A wheels and I've got fenders for both sides excuse the messy garage I'm working in some pretty tight corners here Countertop was more money than I should have spent on it, but I really liked the pattern in it, so we splurged. The plywood I use to make the curvature on the inside here is known as bender board. I found it at a local specialty wood outlet here in Reno. Anybody with some basic woodworking tools and the skills to use them should not be intimidated by this project. But boy, one thing this project taught me is I am no cabinet maker. Kudos to those of you that are. The trailer is outfitted to run on either shore power or on battery. And all of the electrical goes through the power converter that I got from Progressive Dynamics, the PD404-5KA power converter. This is a great little power unit for a trailer this size. It's actually overkill. It's got much more capacity than you need, but it worked out very well for our needs. We only insulated the roof of our unit. Some plans have you do the walls and the floor as well. I assure you that is unnecessary and is only extra weight. Staying warm in this unit is not a problem. Quite the opposite. You get two adult bodies in this small space and you will be burning up in no time. Plus, you're going to have to leave a window or vent open just to get fresh air in the unit, or you're going to suffocate. Another layer of bender board for the structural part of the trailer, and then we skinned the entire thing with aluminum sheets. I went with a D-shaped door because I liked the way it complemented the curvature of the front of the unit. Plus it gave me a nice flat spot at the bottom to sit if I wanted to dangle my feet out the door. Building the hatch was one of the more challenging parts of this project. It needs to be strong, but it also needs to be light. And I will admit that it took me two tries to get it right. Here we're mocking up uh, the fender location so we know where to drill the holes in order to mount the fenders. I put a Model A front bumper on the back of the unit and used regular front bumper brackets to mount it. The only part of this project I didn't do myself was the painting. Here I have rented a U-Haul trailer to take it to a paint shop to get it professionally painted. And here are the results. Once we got it back from the paint shop it was a lot of fun to put the finishing touches on the unit. You saw progress happen really fast. This is the final look of our galley area. The sleeping box measures 46 and a half inches wide by 75 inches long. The trunk on the front of the unit, I custom made that. That's the battery box that holds the, the DC batteries. It's 60% the size of a normal Model A trunk. To tow the unit, we purchased this Model A custom receiver hitch from Wagner Products.